So, Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, as they love to call themselves, they're back to bombing Syria again for the uh, hundredth and uh, millionth time. Uh, yes, this is uh, from a few hours ago, right? From last night. Tell me if you can see that. There we go. Look how many killed. This is what, what, what they claim. Again, the infamous UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which is where the mainstream media have been getting all of their info on Syria for the last, uh, you know, decade. And uh, is, of course, 500% accurate and should never be questioned. <laughs> so they, they say 14 Syrian soldiers and 43 allied militiamen were killed. Now, this story is true because, you know, we have confirmation from, from the Syrian government that, that the airstrikes took place. But, of course, Israel, uh, and again, this story appeared uh, in several outlets, okay? Uh, over here, they're saying 10 Syrian soldiers and 47 allied fighters. And the way, the way uh, Israel justifies this, of course, is they say that, oh, well, we were hitting Iranian targets or Hezbollah targets inside of Syria. That's always the excuse that they give every single time, right? It's like this, this Bush doctrine, right? Preemptive strikes. <laughs> the mental gymnastics. Oh, we better kill them before they kill us. Quick reminder. This is, this is just from 2018. Oh, well, that's now three years ago almost, right? Israel says they've struck Iranian targets in Syria 200 times in the last two years. They've been using the civil, civil war in Syria, the war on Syria, as a, as a cover, right? As, as an excuse to just go in and bomb Syria as they please. I mean, it's not like Israel has ever cared about, you know, other countries' sovereignty and borders. Uh, they've been occupying the Golden Heights since 67. They've been occupying Palestine since 47. So, you know, they, they, they don't care regardless. They go in, do what they like. They bomb Syria almost every, every goddamn week. It's, it's so frequent. I can't even keep up. And they use the same excuse every time. And this is actually quite amazing that they even acknowledge this because usually they won't acknowledge this. They, will, they just don't say anything. When they assassinate someone, when they, when they carry out uh, sabotage, when they carry out bombings, usually they won't even acknowledge it. But they've officially acknowledged they've done it hundreds of times inside of Syria. Right? And, and they keep using this, this idea of, of preemption. And I find, it, I find it really interesting that they do that because... Uh, you know, according to their logic, according to their logic, Venezuela, for example, should be allowed to bomb Colombia because the United States has troops along their border, right? By, by their logic. Venezuela is well within their rights. The U.S. is, is you know, sending troops and, and beefing up their presence, trying to threaten them. Of course. Great logic, right? Have you heard any condemnation about this from anyone, from any government, not just the US, U.S. government, any government? Zero. Not a word. Even the U.N. has given up, right? <laughs> Even the U.N. So, at the same time, today, spotted tonight at Cafe Milano, well, sorry, this is yesterday now, given the time zone difference. Spotted tonight at Cafe Milano, Secretary of State Pompeo and the head of the Mossad, Israel spy agency. Oh, wow. <laughs> and of course, as uh, Edward Snowden succinctly points out, uh, there is no universe in which this is good news. I, I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. You know what's interesting here? I, I want to point something else out because I don't think people are understanding what's going on. Uh... In, in terms of the full picture, this is not just a question of, oh, look, uh, Israel is bombing other countries with impunity and violating their sovereignty. And, uh, you know, no one is, is sanctioning them or punishing them for it on top of it. It's not just that. They're providing military support to ISIS. And no, that's not a stretch. And the U.S. is doing that, too. 
right? So in case you've forgotten, in case you've forgotten, this is from 2016, and this is not the only instance. U.S. airstrike kills dozens of government troops. Again, I, I love how they always like have to use the, the, the term government troops or government forces, or, or you know, usually it'll be regime, because if it's a, it's a country, the United States or the mainstream media doesn't like it's a regime. And so the U.S.-led coalition, again, <laughs> U.S.-led coalition, instead of the illegal occupiers, the U.S.-led coalition has admitted its planes carried out an attack in eastern Syria that the Russian army says killed at least 62 Syrian troops fighting ISIS. 62. There's another one where, where I think they killed even more. And again, I can't keep up. And there was another one just a few months ago where they bombed, uh, uh, you know, there was a convoy of U.S. Uh, uh, troops trying to get through a Syrian army checkpoint and they wouldn't let them through because like, you know, Fuck you, what are you doing in Syria? Like, who are you to just demand that you be let through? I mean, this is absurd. Could you imagine, like, the Syrian army demanding to be let through a, a U.S. checkpoint inside the U.S.? Yeah, that's how absurd it is. So they told them to fuck off, and then the U.S. just bombed the checkpoint. Terrorists. Literal terrorists. Colonizers. Imperialists. So the U.S. is killing Syrian troops fighting ISIS, and Israel is also doing them this courtesy as well, right? This is in the Wall Street Journal from a, from a while back, right? From 2017. Israel gives secret aid to Syrian rebels. Now, you might be saying, oh, well, that's just a stretch, right? You're just saying Syrian rebels and equating them with terrorists. No, I'm not. I don't know. For once, for once, I will lower my shoe against Mehdi Hassan because he did a great interview here with the uh, ex-chief of uh, the Mossad, the Israel. Israel spy agency. Listen, listen to what he, he asks him, okay? This is from 2016. There have been reports that Israel has been treating wounded Syrian rebel fighters in its yeah. hospitals yeah. on the border, yeah. including fighters from Nusra Front, yeah. uh, which is, of course, the Al-Qaeda proxy in Syria. Um, do those reports worry you that Israel's helping wounded Al-Qaeda-aligned fighters? As I said before, in a different context, it's always useful also to deal with your enemies in a humane way. And I think that when you have people who are wounded and you can deal with them in a humane way, the considerations as to whether to take them in are not simply whether it's politically uh, useful or whether it's politically So it's purely humanitarian, you say? So there's no tactical or political or strategic? I didn't say there's no tactical. I said the main consideration, Fine. the immediate consideration Fine. is Humane. But the tactical issues involved, I mean, you know better than me the phrase blowback. You don't think there's going to be blowback against Israel if you get into bed with an, a group like Nusra Front? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's going to be blowback. Why? Because I think that, the, unfortunately, the rules of the game in Syria are such that you can do uh, anything that is not, able, is not possible to be done anywhere else. Yeah, I think people said that in Afghanistan, too. Would you also treat Hezbollah fighters? No. I would not treat... Have you not just contradicted what you told me no, 60 I'm seconds ago? No, I'm not humanely no, treating no, your enemies? No, no. I think as far as Hezbollah uh, uh, fighters are concerned, with them we have a different uh, account. So let me be clear. You would, you, you're happy to treat Al-Qaeda fighters, we have, but not Hezbollah we fighters? Have, we have a different account with Hezbollah. A totally different account. Because Hezbollah has carried out the type of uh, actions against us which pre preclude us from going into what the Al-Qaeda has done. Al-Qaeda, to the best of my recollection, has up to now not attacked Israel. What is attack? Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that, that, is, that is one of the most telling interviews ever. You just, you just heard that. Ex-head of the Mossad. He's straight up saying, yes, we've, we've treated Al-Qaeda fighters, given them medical attention. And so, so we're tr because we're trying to be humane to them, on top of the fact that it's strategically, militarily beneficial to us. It's tactical. And then, and then he says, no, that doesn't apply to Hezbollah because, you know, we, we have beef with Hezbollah. Al-Qaeda's never attacked us. Al-Qaeda's never attacked Israel. We don't have a problem with them. Holy shit. What the fuck? I mean, if I told you that, you would not believe me. You, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Amazing. Again, I, I lower my shoe <laughs> to Mehdi. <laughs> Astonishing, right? So, so do you understand? You understand the bigger picture here, right? 
And I mean, this is such a frequent thing with Israel bombing Syria that even Lebanon, this is from yesterday, even Lebanon has filed a complaint to the United Nations Security Council because Israel keeps violating their airspace on their way to bomb Syria. And, and of course, their, um, even their, um, their maritime, um, their waters, Israel keeps violating. So, amazing. Amazing, right? How the United States, the uh, and in Israel, I mean, just openly admitting that, yeah, they'll they'll help out Al Qaeda because it destabilizes Syria, and that's beneficial to Israel. By the way, if you go watch that full interview, you, you'll you'll hear him say that uh, you know Syria is the key to the Middle East. So they know exactly what they're doing. They're not they're not stupid, right? They're not, they're not stupid. And they have no problem uh, keeping Syria under war for, you know, 10 years, 20 years, because this helps them. They don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the one of the most important countries in the region. They can keep, keep on bullying Palestine. Uh, you know, it creates a buffer between them and uh, subsequently Iran. If Syria is constantly under attack and, and in turmoil, very beneficial for them. And they will get in bed with Al-Qaeda, with Al-Nusra Front, which is, uh, you know, rebranding, and then openly admit it like it's nothing. And then they have the fucking audacity to, to, to talk about, uh, to talk about, you know, uh, terrorism and, and atrocities being committed. No, no. When it comes down to it, just like you saw them arm the Mujahideen and then, you know, that, that, just as Mahdi Hassan points out, the blowback from that, you had then Al-Qaeda. Uh, they have no problem doing that. And, and just as we saw the British government as well, they have no problem doing that. Once again, this, this entire experiment, yeah, bringing in all these uh, foreign fighters to pour into the country, turn it into chaos, level it entirely. And half the country, you know, been displaced, hundreds of thousands of people killed. They don't give a shit. Why? Because it's strategically beneficial. Unbelievable.